Thank you, thank you very much. And thank you, Mike, and all of you here for the optimism, the enthusiasm, the positivity, clearly the determination. And yes, I hear the challenge loud and clear, but I think what you've set out is the potential and we want to be a partner in order for that to be successful. I am delighted, first of all, to be in a room with real people. I think we're all still really appreciating that, walking down Oxford Street and seeing so many people out shopping. It's just such a wonderful vibe. But I'm so delighted, fairly early on in my uh, new role as Minister for Decarbonisation and Future of Transport, to be with you all tonight. The premier event of the automotive industry is back up and running. And for nearly 120 years, the SMMT has been championing the interests of British motoring. But it wasn't always a smooth road. In the automotive race, Britain initially lagged behind our European partners, largely because of legal restrictions introduced in the 19th century, limiting road vehicles to a maximum speed of two miles per hour in cities. They also required a man to walk 60 yards in front of the vehicle, waving a red flag to warn passers-by of what was about to arrive. These so-called red flag acts ended up being a barrier to investment and innovation. And until they were repealed, our automotive industry likely grew at the equivalent glacial speed of two miles per hour. It's a reminder of what happens when we stand in the way of technological progress. But I'm pleased to say that this government is not in the business of waving red flags. We want to create the conditions for our world-leading automotive industry to flourish, to develop and innovate and safeguard its future. It's a future where car ownership is forecasted to double globally, but where that demand must be met clearly. That's why this government is going further and faster to decarbonise transport by phasing out the sale of petrol and diesel cars and vans, new petrol and diesel cars and vans, by 2035. And it's why our new ZEV mandate will set targets on zero emission car sales from 2024. It's also why we have pledged £2.5 billion to support the transition to electric vehicles, from reducing sticker prices to excise duty exemption. And the results so far have been really encouraging. Manufacturers such as Volvo and Ford have already pledged all electric passenger cars by 2030, with Jaguar aiming to get there by 2035. Indeed, electric vehicles priced under £35,000 have increased by over 60% since 2019, and consumers are responding. Over one in seven new cars sold this year had a plug attached. And surveys show that there is no buyer's remorse, but we must go further. And firstly, we must continue to increase that customer confidence level, putting to bed any doubts that your next vehicle should be a zero emission one. Key here is the UK's plan for an extensive and world leading charging infrastructure, which we're already delivering and will be set out in our upcoming EV infrastructure strategy. It not only combats the range anxiety that is putting some people off, but will realise our aim that it should be easier to charge your car than it is to fill it up. Currently on our major roads, we have more rapid charges per 100 miles than anywhere else in Europe as part of an over 26,000 strong charging network which is growing day by day. Indeed, in two years, every motorway service station will have at least six high-powered chargers, allowing drivers to charge up in the time it takes to have a cup of coffee. I was delighted that yesterday, government announced our much-anticipated plans for all new homes and non-residential buildings, including offices and supermarkets, to have charge points fitted, thanks to new legislation coming into force next year. It's a world-leading plan and could see up to 145,000 charge points installed the country every year. But that's not all. 
We'll be revealing plans to make it easier to pay at all rapid charge points, to increase price transparency and to improve the reliability of the network. The British car industry is doing what it does best, innovating, delivering and adapting. You're motoring on ahead with the EV transition and this government will ensure that the infrastructure keeps pace. Secondly, we must see EVs for the opportunities that they are, not just to reduce emissions and clean up the air, but to create new, highly skilled jobs in the green industries of tomorrow. That's why this government has already provided £850 million through the Automotive Transformation Fund to build an internationally competitive EV supply chain here in the UK. And it's why the Office of Zero Emission Vehicles will continue to work with innovators to help get great British products and technology into the mainstream. From vehicle lightweighting to power electronics, ensuring British manufacturing remains cutting edge. Our industry has already received huge votes of confidence from the likes of Nissan, Stellantis and Ford. It's clear to see they see Britain as places to a place to develop their new electric models and these investments will ensure that as we build back from the pandemic, we do so by levelling up the country, spreading opportunity from Sunderland to Ellesmere Port. Finally, let me briefly mention what's at stake. Last week, I attended Transport Day at COP26, where we successfully secured 110 signatories for our global zero emission vehicle campaign. It committed nations, cities, and manufacturers to 100% new zero emission car and van sales by 2040 at the latest. And it was only because of the progress of our domestic manufacturers, indeed the very people in this room, that the UK could demonstrate any leadership on this issue and demand similar progress from others. There really is no time to lose. Road transport accounts for 17% of global CO2 emissions, and its emissions are rising faster than those of any other sector, with 2 billion new vehicles set to be sold over the next 20 years. We must make sure that as many as possible are zero emission, I started by talking about how restricting progress is futile, that technology and the cost of demand will win through in the end. And I believe that's where we are with zero emission vehicles. We've reached the tipping point and it's clear to see that they are the future. And I am confident that in the UK, with your innovation and expertise, we will be at the forefront of this very important transition. Thank you.